Hello. The Manitoba government in Canada has recently introduced and is passing legislation that will give paid a leave for people who are dealing with issues around domestic violence and the workplace. So I've had the pleasure to be at the legislative hearings and to make a presentation on behalf of the Canadian Labour Congress, but importantly I was able to also hear the presentations from many labour and community people. I'm here with Kevin Reback from the Manitoba Federation of Labour. Kevin, when you did your presentation, you did a great presentation from the policy and political perspective of why this is needed for the workplace. And then you ended by telling two really important stories of people that you knew had, who had been affected by domestic violence. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think most people probably have stories like this. They aren't my own stories, but they're friends of mine. And uh, I shared two stories, two sisters, two women that, uh, that reached out to, uh, and touched my life. And one of them was a, a friend of mine who I worked very closely with and was a really good friend that we shared things all the time and talked about things. And one day out of the blue, I got a, a phone call from her and she was in tears. And she said, Kevin, can you come pick me up? I can't take him hitting me anymore. And I went and I picked her up and grabbed her and her kids and some suitcases and, and took her to her to her mother's place and a place of safety. And I found out, you know, she'd been wanting to leave for some time. I was a bit surprised. I didn't know anything was askew or anything was wrong. And, you know, we talked every day about things. And I found out she stayed longer than she wanted to, but she was saving up so that she'd be able to provide for her kids and get new child care and have her first and last month's rent to get a new place to live. And, uh, and that kind of surprised me that, that someone was going through that and someone I cared about and it was that secret. Mm. And then there was another sister uh, in the union movement that I met, met at a QP school and uh, she was bright and keen and enthusiastic and she wanted to speak up for people who had trouble speaking up for themselves mm -hmm. and she was taking all sorts of courses and getting really involved. She was a QP 500 member, that's our city of Winnipeg local. And uh, coming up was the QP Manitoba convention and uh, it was going to be her first time going to convention and she had that kind of contagious nature of positiveness with her and I was really looking forward to, to seeing her at convention and yeah. her getting to meet still more union activists. And convention opened, and uh, I got to, you know, kind of bring greetings to convention, as as is the role of, of a president. And she wasn't there, and I was wondering where Shannon Shannon was, and I was kind of looking for her, and I thought, oh, things happen, and some things come up. It wasn't until lunchtime when I found out the reason she wasn't there was that uh, the night before, she got in an argument at home with her boyfriend and uh, he ended the argument like he did most times, I understand later, through violence. Mm -hmm. Only this time, uh, this time he picked up a hammer and he ended her life. And uh, we shared that with the floor of convention and there was a resolution on domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And as sad and shocking as that was, the mics lined up, 20, 30 people at a microphone and for the next uh, hour and a half, two hours, people spoke about their first-hand experiences of domestic violence and what they'd suffered through. And it was, uh, was a defining moment, I think, for our union activists mm -hmm. there, that this is an issue that needed to be addressed. This is an issue that needs to be talked about. This is an issue that can't stand with the silence. And it needs action, and it needs supports. And I'm pretty proud that our government in Manitoba has done the right thing and is providing paid domestic violence leave because I know it would have made a difference for my first friend. She would have been able to leave sooner if she knew she had financial stability. Yeah. And I can't help wonder if Shannon was saving up and how close was she? And if a leave like this existed, maybe she would have left in time. So this will save lives this kind of legislation and law and it's something we need across Canada and across all countries to provide some safety and security for victims of domestic violence.
Kevin, that's an absolutely powerful... Uh, it's not a story, it's part of your life now too. It's what you go forward with. So this was a powerful moment. It was a powerful presentation uh, in Manitoba, but it's just as powerful now. And I think that um, people hearing this story, uh, hearing this information, will understand not just the politics and the policy of this legislation, but what it means to people's lives and why we need to move quickly on leaves uh, and other supports for people leaving domestic violence situations or living in domestic violence situations so that you know it's going to save lives it's going to make a difference thank you so much for sharing uh, that and I think that you're doing great honor to both of those women and to all of the women who are dealing with this um, and by sharing this story thank you uh, on for your leadership and for your strength and your courage to come forward with these stories Thanks, Barb. I know it'll make a difference, and we all need to speak out and support one another. Absolutely. Thanks, Kevin.